there and welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review today's pen is back in the category of inexpensive fountain pens that write that means they are in the $20 range and they put ink on paper when there's ink in the pen no offense meant to those very expensive pens that need an expert to tweak it this is my guest mr. Wang no offense so it will write for a while Today's fountain pen is a new offering in the very popular Wing Sung 601 line of Parker 51 like hooded nib fountain pens, the Wing Sung 601 Flighter. This has a very attractive brushed steel body with gold accents, very much inspired by the Flighter line of Parker pens. Parker produced the first Parker 51 Flighter in 1949 to resemble an airplane. Subsequent models came in flighter versions, like the Parker 61 flighter version, to celebrate the 1959 McDonnell Douglas DC-8 passenger jet, which they dubbed the Jet Fighter. Collectors refer to the stainless steel models, Parker or not, as flighter models. This Wingsong 601 flighter is not simply a stainless steel pen called a flighter, it is the spitting image of a Parker 51 flighter. Perhaps we should call it the Spitfire Flighter? Today I'm going to look at this very sleek and beautiful pen and compare it to another hooded nib Wingsong I have, the Wingsong 618 Piston Filler. I'm also going to show you how to change out the hard nail of a nib that comes standard with these guys and replace it with a bobby bent nib or what some call a mini fude nib. But I wanted to ask you all a question in reference to what I said earlier about needing a pen expert to make a pen write. As a fountain pen user, do you feel that a pen should be able to write right out of the box without any tweaking or fiddling or expert nib gurus? This is a question that is debated quite a bit in my pen club. Think about the question and be prepared to give me your opinion in the comments section below after we've taken a close look at this sleek aluminum flighter right now. <music> Okay, here's a package that arrived in a timely fashion from China. I ordered this on September 20th and it is October 7th today. Let's open this up and see what it is. This is from Bobby Pens, so I'm not surprised it's packed well. And it's Bobby Pens on Etsy. These cardboard boxes from Wingsung are quite flimsy they look very similar don't they to uh, Lamy Safari boxes and this is the Wingsung 601 flighter and this actually has some extra things in it here for me I bought these three nibs from Bobby extra but that is a an upturned bent nib uh, like a food a nib but it's a very small one very similar to my pen BBS pens and I bought it with this pen because I wanted to replace the standard nib in there with a mini food a nib so we'll take a good look at this pen and do some nib surgery coming right up so as I said in the introduction, I want to look at the Wingsung 601 Flighter and compare it to two Wingsung 618s that I have. This one in transparent blue and gold and this one in black and transparent. Of course, they're piston fillers. And you're going to have to forgive me. I've been doing some hot swapping um, of nibs and so forth to get ready for this video. And so a little bit inky today but what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen and show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen when we get to the nib on this pen I want to take this pen apart for you and show you how I replace the nib with a Bobby Bent nib or a mini food aid. So this is the Wingsong 601 Flighter. The 601 has been around for a long time and is very popular. 
and an inexpensive fountain pen. It comes in a huge variety of finishes. Some have transparent bodies, some have ink windows, and there is a 601A version which comes with a tubular nib and some of them have an ink window. This is my wife's 601A in burgundy with a wavy gold cap and a jewel on the top and the bottom. Very pretty pen. This one has the same filling system as the flighter, which we'll look at in a moment. From the top, we see a conic shaped finial in gold colored metal, which is almost identical to the Parker 51. This is a Parker 51 from 1954 I have, and it has a jewel, which is like an acrylic on the top. The flighter from 1948 actually had uh, a top just like this 601. And of course, this Parker 51 is gold filled. Then we see the gold ring with a gold Parker arrow clip, which is nicely springy and very, very usable. It has a brushed stainless steel cap, which tapers up and then is straight until the end where we see a single engraved ring. Some Chinese characters right here, 601. I assume those Chinese characters being Wing Sun. And on the back it says, made in China. This is to dissuade you from believing that you have a genuine Parker 51 flighter in your hands. There's a very small step down to the barrel, which is straight until about here, where it begins to taper to a single gold ring, which separates the blind cap, which is also brushed stainless steel, and continues in the taper to the bottom finial, which mirrors the shape of the top finial. The blind cap unscrews and reveals the push rod for the vacuumatic filling system. The original 1941 versions of the Parker 51 used this kind of push button filler vacuumatic system until it was replaced by the aerometric filling system in 1948, which didn't have a blind cap. And that looked like this. It had a ink sack in the center and a bar, a push bar, to be able to push on that ink sack to be able to fill the pen. So this Wingsong 601 is inspired by the original version of the Parker 51 from 1941 to 1948. Interesting though that the flighter model of the 51 was introduced by Parker in 1949 and so it was an aerometric filler not a vacuum filler like this one. The cap slips off with another innovation by Parker back in 1941, the Parker clutch. This gold ring, which separates the barrel from the section, engages with indentations inside the cap to clutch the cap securely, but allow for easy slip on and slip off. With the cap off, we see a long tapering section identical in size and shape to the original Parker 51. Even today, 79 years later, we can see how revolutionary and futuristic this pen design was. Look, we're being attacked by hostile pipe welders. The sleek tapering section with no step between the barrel and the section, the hidden hooded nib, the space age lines of the pen, all of these features must have been stunning to the fountain pen user of the day. From the rakish flare of its new flight swept rear fenders, right up to its bold but elegant new front styling. The new Power Style Chrysler emphasizes the forward look of power in motion. Looks like it's still moving, even when it stops. Some design. Remember, there were no ballpoint pens in 1941, having first hit the market in 1948. And the cap posts deeply and securely and becomes part of the streamlined bullet shape of this pen. The balance is perfect, both posted and unposted. The hooded nib, the hidden ink collector, all make this one of the most remarkable fountain pen innovations since the invention of the fountain pen. I would even suggest that the Bauhaus design of the Lamy 2000 was inspired by this design. Of course, it isn't just design. The whole idea behind the hooded nib was functional and practical. How do you keep the nib from drying out? The Parker engineers took the nib and the feed and encased them in this long tapering section by replacing the feed with an ink collector 
and only the very tip of the nib protrudes from the end. The engineers and developers were killing two birds with one stone here as well. They had developed a quick drying fountain pen ink called Parker Super Chrome. Of course, a fast drying ink would be a problem for an exposed feed, so enclosing the nib gave you a fountain pen that would not dry out and which wrote with an ink that didn't smear, which is a godsend to lefties. Not everything was rosy for these Parker developments though, as the Super Chrome ink is notoriously corrosive and should be kept away from anything metal and or celluloid. So I'm going to disassemble this Wingsung 601 to show you all of these parts in the filling system. This is not something the ordinary mortal can do with a Parker 51 since Parker glued these plastic hoods onto their pens. But thankfully Wingsung have made all these parts easy to get at, disassemble, clean and or replace. So let's take this pen apart. First off Wingsung has provided a parts diagram which is really really helpful. A little diagram on how to fill the pen and how to silicone grease the piston and how to clean your pen. So the first thing we do is we take the cap off and we see the ink collector. So this is just a plastic section which has a number of fins. Uh, there is an ink feeder right here and a little siphon attached to that and there's the nib. This is the nib that came with the pen and I'm going to replace it with this nib you can see is slightly upturned. With the ink feeder it just comes right off just like that and we have the ink feeder with the little siphon tube. Now in order to get that small plastic feed and the nib and the siphon out of that ink feeder it's in there pretty tight so I put a little elastic band around that and grip it with a pair of pliers and just sort of give it a little bit of a twist and a pull and it comes right out and then that nib should just slide right off and then I can just slide the new nib right on, line it up. It'll all push in to the ink feeder. Push that in and then put the elastic band around it and give it the final push to make sure that it's seated properly and lined up. Then the trick here, how to line up the nib with the hood. So at this point, you can just put that into the body of the pen, screw the hood down until it, it is absolutely as tight as you can get, and you'll notice that it doesn't line up. But we can see that the, the nib is sort of 90 degrees to the left. So I'm going to unscrew the hood again. We're going to turn that nib almost 90 degrees. Put the section back on. We see we're off by just a couple of degrees. You can also put a little marker line on there if you wanted to to see where the hood ends up. And then we screw it back down again. And there we go after a couple of trial and errors. I've got it lined up pretty nicely. And at this point, now that I've got it lined up, I'm going to take it apart again. And I'm going to add a little bit of silicone grease. There you see there's an O-ring right there and these threads. I'm not going to get it near this feed, but they provided silicone grease with the pen. So I'm going to drop just a single drop. Run it around. Now the reason I do this, I've learned from experience. I had a, quite a nasty leak right there when I did this the first time. There, now I've got the hood together. Now let's take a look at the piston mechanism. So we're going to unscrew the piston knob. And you see there's a, a hex nut right there. And you can put a small hex wrench on there. Um, or if you're careful, I've already loosened this with a wrench, so this should come apart fairly easily. 
but the first time you do it might require a little bit more effort and then you can pull the piston out and you can clean the inside of that barrel and here are the piston parts there's the collar that goes into the bottom of the barrel and the piston rod and the spring is inside this collar here and there's the piston right there before I put this back in the barrel I'm going to add a little bit of silicone grease to it as always a little dab will do you and screw it down and then I'm just going to turn it again I'm holding onto this very very lightly just turn it snug can I feel that piston grease greasing up the inside of the barrel put the blind cap back on and you're in business now let's ink up the pen I'm using Roshizuku and Takasumi here so I'm going to dip the pen into the ink and I'm going to push down on that plunger and I can hear bubbles and I just keep pushing on it until I don't hear bubbles anymore what's a pen without bubbles hey what's a pen without bubbles hey bubbles come over here will you well, what's your favorite subject uh, poetry really <laughs> well maybe you can help me straighten out my long fellow <laughs> my blind cap back on again and we're ready to write this is possibly the easiest filling pen ever the nib is so small and so close to the filling hole that you can get that nib down into even the tightest corners on ink bottles and all you do is just keep pressing that plunger until you get rid of all the bubbles and you've got a full fill and you're done just wipe the nib and presto you're ready to go and this pen takes about one milliliter of ink so let's look at a comparison of these very similar Wingsung models the 601 the 601A and the 618 piston filler other than the colors the 601 and the 601A are very similar and only have three physical differences the 601A has a tubular steel nib and an ink window they both have the same vacuumatic piston type filler with the blind cap so the main difference between these two pens is the nib between the 601 and the 618 the differences are greater although they both have the same hooded nib and hood and ink feeder system the 618 has a different kind of finial and a different kind of arrow clip and the 618 has a domed finial and of course the end of the two pens is different with this having a blind cap and the conic finial at the end and this being a rounded finial which is a piston knot I've replaced the stock nibs on both of these 618 piston fillers with the Bobby bent nibs and in my video review which I will link in the description I demonstrate how to take this piston system apart and get the pen back together again and of course the other difference is that this is a screw cap and this is a slip cap and the 618 has a large cap ring with wing sung and the model number on it where there is no cap ring on the 601 at all the 601 flighter comes with silver or gold trim and i paid 22 dollars and 70 cents us for this one i also purchased the four bobby bent nibs for six dollars and 80 cents from bobby's etsy store chinese pen this pen was shipped on september 23rd and i received it in my mailbox on October 7th exactly two weeks now let's look at some size comparisons so here is the Wingsung 601 flighter with a Parker 51 a Wingsung 618 piston filler a Parker sonnet and a pilot Metropolitan now let's look at them posted and here they are posted and these are some of the best posting pens I've ever had the Parker Sonnet is probably the best poster of all of them. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this 
is the wing song. Six oh one flighter. And it has a mini food A steel nib. And the ink today is a Roshizuku. Takesumi. Here's the swatch for Takesumi along with Hero Black and J. Urbain Stormy Gray. Let's check the wetness. This is a very wet pen, very nice. And as to line variation, well, of course, you're going to get some because it's a Fude nib. There's a vertical stroke. And there's a horizontal stroke. You can see that the vertical is thinner and the horizontal is thicker. So it lends itself very nicely. Very similar to a, um, an architect's italic, like my architect italic in my Momento Zero. So you're not going to get any bounce. This is a steel nib and it's very, very stiff but uh, it's very smooth. And very juicy. And I love the, the character it gives in my writing. I actually find my handwriting improves with this kind of nib. So I'll ask you guys this question as well. Are there certain pens that actually improve your writing and others that you go, oh, my writing just sucks with this nib. I find it fascinating which ones accentuate my writing style and which ones detract from it. These are also very similar to what is called a zoom nib. Um, I've not experienced one, but I'm led to understand that the change in angle from vertical, there's a line vertically, to a very low angle gets you a thicker line especially on the horizontal stroke. So here's a horizontal stroke almost perpendicular to the page. And here is a horizontal stroke that is at a very low angle. You can see the difference in variation depending on the angle that you write with. And the variation between this line and this line, according to my Richard Binder chart, is the thin one is 0.4 millimeters and the thick line is 0.7 millimeters. That's quite a, a line variation. It goes from this is a Western XF or a Japanese F and this at 0.7 is a between a medium uh, and a broad western and almost a double broad uh, for a Japanese nib. And our writing sample And for some reverse writing, it actually does it. It's very scratchy, but it does do some reverse writing. And for quick writing, as you can see, it keeps up pretty well. That was me skipping off the page. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I love the look of this pen. I had a Parker Jotter ballpoint in the flighter style and used it throughout university. It was sleek and stylish. 
I love that pen. This wing song is the same. I love the price of this pen. At $23 US, it is a bargain for a fountain pen that just writes and writes every time. I like the filling system. I don't quite know how Parker considered the aerometric style filling system on this Parker 51 an improvement over the vacuumatic system that they had in production since 1933. I suppose it has to do with maintenance and materials. With modern materials like plastics and silicone that they didn't have in 1941, the vacuumatic might have been an upgrade. But I like this piston. You just pump and pump and pump until you don't hear bubbles anymore. And you're full. And the pen has excellent ink capacity. I like that the pen comes apart and goes back together again so easily for maintenance, cleaning, and nib replacement. I should actually mention that without this bobby bent nib, I dislike these Wing Song 601 and 618 pens very much. They're stiff and create a boring line. But with this mini Fude nib, all of these pens now have some really great character to them. Which is completely lacking in the regular nib that comes with this pen. So with the Mini Fude nib, my writing has all kinds of character and without the extra cost of getting a custom ground Architects Italic. I love the way this pen feels in my hand, both posted and unposted, uh, but I especially like how deeply the cap posts. The pen is certainly properly named as a flighter model. It's sleek and aerodynamic, which helps with wind resistance when you're doing a lot of really fast writing. I love the long, sleek section. It allows for a multitude of grip styles, from back here to down close. And because it's plastic and not metal, it's not slippery at all. I love the balance of the pen in the hand and the light weight. I love how it clips easily to a shirt or a jacket pocket, to a clipboard or into a portfolio. I like this model better than the 618 because it's sleeker and it actually uncaps faster. And the 618, even though it posts very nicely, doesn't have the sleek, uninterrupted lines of the 601. So what don't I like about this pen? Well, it is hard to see the orientation of the nib because the nib is so small and hidden from view at your pen angle. The Parker 61 solved that problem by embedding a little arrow into the hood section right here. But actually what I do is I just take a moment to line up the Parker arrow with the nib when I'm posting the pen. And that way the arrow always points in the right direction. While I'm writing I just reference where that arrow tip is and it keeps the pen in alignment. Problem solved. So an idiot. Of course, whenever Wingsong comes up with a flighter version of the 601A with a tubular nib and an ink window, I'll be all over that in a heartbeat. So there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.